Great. Hi, this is Eric Friedman. I'm the Executive Director of the Meadow Valley Chamber of Commerce, and we are here for our Tuesday uh, Coffee and Conversation, and today's guest is Diane Scalero from Norwich University, and she's going to be talking about uh, the big 200th bicentennial uh, that's coming up and how it's going to impact the Valley and how we can take advantage of it. Diane, Good welcome morning. to the Valley. Good morning. Happy to be here. This is a special day at Norwich. Today, actually, today, August 6th, is our 200th birthday. 200 years ago today, the cornerstone was laid down in Norwich, Vermont. Um, and there's not a whole lot written about it, but I guess at that time, and you folks may know this, I was not aware of it, but at that time, it was common for people to put coins on the cornerstones. And uh, that was their way of wishing luck to the building that was coming. So about 60 years later, when the original buildings burnt down, they found some of the bricks and some of the coins that were there. But for the last 140 years, we've been in Northfield, so just over the mountain. And this year, as our bicentennial, is a, a pretty exciting one. So you may know how much is going on at Northfield, in Northfield at Norwich, over the last couple of years. We're just finishing $57 million in construction over the last five years. Several buildings have been renovated, a couple of new ones. In President Schneider's 28 years, every building on campus has either been built or renovated. So the campus is beautiful. And speaking of President Schneider, you may all know, he is winding down his time at Norwich. We've begun the search for the next president. He's our 23rd, We've been there 28 years. Um, and so it's a little bit of an anxious time as we think about who is going to be coming in next, because he's done an exceptional job. He thought he would be there for about five years. <laughs> and uh, um, as with many of us, it, 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 has, it has grown on him. So those are, those are two big things. Lots happening on campus. Our president is transitioning out, and we're in the, in the search process. And we're celebrating a major, a major bicentennial. As I said earlier, Norwich is among the 40 oldest colleges in the nation. So not a lot of people can, can claim that kind of distinction in that length of time. Um, and we have a very, very proud alumni base, about 25,000 living alumni. And a typical homecoming for us is about 2,500 to 3,000 people. So right now we're on track for six to 8,000 people to be in Northfield in, uh -huh. in just a few weeks. Homecoming. So we should make dinner reservations. You should make dinner reservations. You should make dinner at home. Even better, <laughs> you should think about renting out your house because um, the valley is our alumni's favorite place to stay. They like going over the mountain, down the other side, dropping right into Northfield. Uh, Sugarbush has been booked for six to eight months now. They're our, the go-to property because so many of our events happen there. And I'll, I'll just send these around, but for those who are viewing, the, the parts in here that are highlighted in yellow are things that are taking place here in the valley, mostly at Sugarbush, but not exclusively. So in our five-day schedule of events, lots of folks are going to be over here. Um, homecoming officially begins on Wednesday, but because we have people coming from across the country and really from around the world, we know some people are coming in the weekend before. So you're looking at a week-long influx of Norwich alumni and their families. Um, the first day of homecoming is Wednesday, September 18th. That day is mainly meetings for some of our supporting organizations, but again, um, people will be coming early for the whole week, and those that are in the meetings are bringing families and partners who are looking for things to do. So. They love to explore, they love to buy Vermont products, they like to get out in the country. So I think that you'll, you'll be seeing a lot of folks wandering around town, especially those first couple of days. And then when we get to the weekend, um, they'll be here to party. They're here to reunion and to spend time together. Um, so we have five classes that are having reunion events at Sugarbush. Many, they've taken every single room as they become available at Sugarbush, but also in condos and private homes. Um, every inn that I'm aware of it, it is filled. And I know it's not just Norwich, because I know we're also at the start of foliage season then, so it's not just Norwich, but we've been encouraging them since last October to start booking for this September. Any questions or? 
So they're not just staying here. I mean, they're staying all over the place in Stowe and Montgomery. They are. So oh, as far as West Burlington, right? They are. So they filled the valley first because, mm -hmm. as I said, our, our a lot of our events are here, and this is their their favorite place to stay. The next most popular area. Well, we got Barry and Montpelier, and there are not many places to stay in Northfield. Uh, but Barry and Montpelier, Phil, and then Stowe, we have some classes there. And this year, we have more classes in Burlington than we've ever had. Mm -hmm. I, I won't say classes so much as individuals. And for those who are flying in and out of Burlington, and uh, it's, it's just as easy to drive down 89 to Northfield as it is over the mountain for, for people who are flying in that Burlington mm -hmm. zone. Yeah. Great. So we, as I, as I said earlier, you can, um, there's several ways you can get involved. Come over the mountain and come play with us. Come, come enjoy the festivities. We have a great food service on campus, but they cannot accommodate the number of people that we're looking at. So we've created a, a whole food truck alley, and we're looking for vendors that are, are interested in spending the weekend with us, all day Friday and Saturday, to serve um, out of their trucks or food tents in some cases because we've got a lot of people to feed. So we're looking for that. Um, we invite you to come over to the football game, which will be very exciting. So there's a long standing rivalry between Norwich and the Coast Guard Academy. There were several years in there that they didn't play, but they just re uh, resurrected that competition three years ago and they played here in Northfield, and then last year they played at the Coast Guard Academy, and this year they're coming back. Um, so that will be a, a really big game. And then on Friday night, Friday night we're having a, a gala that is really the, the Northfield um, bicentennial celebration. And while there are tickets available for that, it will be capped off by an enormous fireworks display. One of our cadets, uncle, works for Fireworks by Grucci, which is the nation's mm -hmm. largest fireworks display company. And so um, as, a, as a gift to his nephew, that company is coming up to, to do a, a really great fireworks display. So folks are wel very welcome to come and join us in Northfield. And then from here, again, if you have property or you know of folks who have property that they'd like to rent out and list it on VRBO or Airbnb, I know folks are, are still looking for housing. Um, even though we've been promoting for a long time, sign up early, and people have done that, I know that sometimes people just can't make plans in advance, and so they're still looking, and they're just making plans now to be here. So what else can I tell you about it? Well, I mean, one of the things that I was interested in is seeing how maybe the restaurant community and the retail community might be able to take advantage of having all of these folks running around. And we created, for the, at the Chamber, we created a page for this on our website, I think I shared yeah, it with you. you um, and I'd like to flesh it out, and I'll put this on there sure. so people, all the information's there. Um, and we're thinking about ways that we can Great. try to encourage them to come check out the retail stores and go to the uh, restaurants. Do you have any thoughts on how we might be able to do that, or experiences that you've done with sure. other communities? Well, in Montpelier, um, probably in Stowe and in Barrie as well, we're asking the local merchants if they'd be willing to put a sign up in their windows that might say, we haven't de developed the exact text, but something like, uh, welcome Norwich alumni, or congratulations Norwich, or something like that, so that there's a visibility in town. Um, Montpelier won't allow, but in Northfield, we're putting a, a banner across the, the street that just says, welcome Norwich alumni. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have a little bit of visibility, yeah, and I absolutely. think it's really impressive to folks coming from all kinds of places mm -hmm. to feel welcomed when they come to these communities. So if there's an opportunity for that, we would be happy to create them yeah. and distribute them. Well, we definitely have a banner, and I'll, I'll be in touch with you. We have okay. a place that for a great. big banner for sure, and I think our retailers and the restaurants would certainly okay. want to get involved in that kind of stuff as well. We there haven't, a, go ahead. Sorry, is there another newsletter coming out before? Yes, uh, for sure. Had that PDF, they could go ahead and do it as attachment or just a download where folks could just download it and print it off at their work next. That's great idea. Yeah, yeah, great idea. So we did last year, and we intend to do again this year, is put together packets for all of the hotels where we know people are staying. So they'd have a little welcome packet in there. 
with what's happening on campus, but also if there is a chamber piece that we should be including in that, map of town, anything like that, we're happy to do that. That would be in, in their welcome packets when they get to the hotels that they're staying in. We, we won't do it at private residences, but we have so many people just staying on the mountain and, and in various inns and um, lodging that we plan to do that. And there's a registration on Thursday and Friday, right? At and I think Kathy mentioned something about having uh, a table up there. Oh, yes, right? yes. So um, Plumley Armory is sort of the go-to central place where everybody will get dropped and come through. And uh, most people have registered, but we ask them to check in. So Plumley Armory is a really big open space, and we have an area that we're setting aside for local information for Chamber of Commerce. And so, yes, we would love to have you there. Okay. And if you can't be there personally, we'll be happy to have your information there that we can share. That'd be great. And if you want to do rotating shifts, um, the best times to be there would be Thursday afternoon, all day Friday, and Saturday till about 2. But definitely all day Friday and most of Saturday, we'll, we'll see thousands of people coming through that, that space. Oh, that's great. I'm just trying to think if there's any... And do you communicate with um, the people coming and we email or is there any other... We do. Okay. So we have asked Governor Scott to do a welcome video. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen the script for that, but I think it's going to be recorded soon. But it's really to that point. While yeah. you're here, yeah. check out Vermont, you know, buy stuff, bring it home, come back again, are the, are the things that we'd like him to, to mention in, in his report. But he knows that where the areas that people are coming to and the communities that we'd like him to promote, especially as part of that. And you know, there's obviously a million things to do besides this super full agenda for the four days, but mm -hmm. would there be an opportunity for me to send you a map link for the paths and trails network? Absolutely, yeah. Cool. Yeah, we can, we can print it off and include it in there. Oh. As I said, this, the, this list is for everyone who's coming to Norwich, but uh, families and partners aren't always as excited to spend three days on campus <laughs> as the alumni are. Um, so I know lots of folks like to shop and explore and, and get out and enjoy being in Vermont. So that would be a great addition to what we're, we're sharing with them. Happy to do that. So if we have last minute availability as a result of cancellations, is there um, a preferred place for us to let you know that we have something available? There is, and I will give you my card. We okay. have a website that we check regularly. Well, it's got, a, it's got a long list of establishments that we're aware of, and then we have been calling over the last month or so just to see what availability is. But if we become aware that there are rooms and places, especially here, that we weren't aware of, we can push that out, and I think okay. they'd get so snapped up pretty quickly. We've had several rooms booked for here, for, for <laughs> Norwich. <laughs> but we, we write that full, but you never know, things can change. Sure. Because not all of our guests are going to Norwich. We, so, homecoming being the biggest one, but you probably also see a lot of folks in two weeks when people start dropping off their students. Mm -hmm. We have an incoming class of about 800 students, so 800 families bringing their, their kids to Vermont in many cases for the first time, though we, though we do have a lot of Vermonters that are attending. And they, when they get here, they make their reservations for four years later when their students are expected to graduate. So some establishments will allow that, but not all. Some do four, five, and six. Some do. Yeah. But yeah. There's a few that do. <laughs> what percentage of the students are in part of our cadets versus non our student body at this time is 2,500, and about 1,500 of them are in the Corps of Cadets. Mm -hmm. So 800 are civilian or commuter students. And what I find really interesting is that that 1,500 doesn't all commission into the military. It's actually a pretty small percentage. So most of the students that come and are part of the Corps are there for the leadership training and for the experience and um, the military training that they get as being part of the Corps, even if they're not going to go into the military. So these days, uh, every military contractor has many civilians in it, so you can get that whole background and have that understanding and then work with the military without being in it. So we see an awful lot of students that go into businesses where they work with the military, but they don't serve. That's great. 
it is interesting that so many students choose to do that these days. And as, and as colleges these days, it seems like Norwich is where a lot of them are struggling. Norwich is doing pretty well. We're, we're pretty lucky. I, I, we are lucky in, in many ways. We have a very good endowment. And again, I'll credit uh, President Schneider with, with growing it from $8 million when he first got there to 220 where it is now. Um, but we also offer an experience that not many schools do. Norwich is the only private military college in the country. So you've got federal academies uh, for Air Force and Army, Navy, um, and Coast Guard. And then you have state schools like Virginia Military College and the Citadel and Texas A&M. But Norwich is the only one that's a private school and always, and always has been. Um, I forget what your original question was, but I was going to say something about that. No, no. You did. <laughs> you answered. answer. I answered. Okay. Play back. Okay. <laughs> no, I really appreciate you coming. This is great. It's a, and it's a great opportunity for our business community, and I uh, appreciate you letting us know what is happening, and we'll certainly be in touch, and we'd love to get this electronically, and I'll make sure we get this onto Happy you know, to our page, you. and we'll keep fleshing that out, and, yeah. um, and just keep communicating. We really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. For